in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Uh, recently, the Lord was uh, giving me, you know, like uh, an access to few videos where uh, there is a debate between Christian and Jews. Uh, and maybe this is time for us as a Christian church to be aware of what's happening since we are on the verge of having that uh, uh, Abrahamic religion released and with this will be the sign treaty. Uh, and of course, you know, the building of the temple. Um, so I just want every Christian to listen carefully and to the Jews. Uh, so primary, uh, the Torah was given by God, by the hand of God uh, and was received, you know, to the Jewish nation especially the Jewish nation or the Israelites, let's say in, in a broader uh, aspect, but they didn't uh, comprehend it. There was a light who need to come upon it. Um, the thing is you need a, an, an encounter with the Lord. Without that encounter, those words are too, the truth is in front of your face and you cannot uh, uh, comprehend it or it doesn't relate to you. You're not really knowing, understand, what is this that mean? And people, of course, understand the word of God on different level of spirituality, attention and ear to the Lord. We all differ. But the thing is, the Israelites need an encounter with Yahweh. Then the similar to the one that Moses had. Like people can think Moses, are the, 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 the one that all the Jews and the Christians, of course, followed. Uh, the guy who looked like a bit crazy talking to a, a burning tree or telling us something like funny. But we believe that that was a revelation and that was true. And from that, we thought that Yahweh talked to him. For every one of us need that revelation, especially the Jews, because without this revelation is all orders. And God is not after law and orders. He is after you and me, after our hearts. So if you never ask God for an encounter, exactly like the one that Jacob had with Lord, um, and, and he wrestled with him and he asked him to bless him, it has to be something personal. Then uh, it's all very heavy to comprehend and, and to, uh, God wanted to give that great joy, you know, like your heart is over flooding with joy because you encounter, you had a meeting and touch from the Lord. And here is the Torah is really uh, enlightened to you and you start to understand. What <clears throat> the Jewish nation look like, a nation who's been really, um, I'm not gonna say that, but I'm saying uh, hypnotized, you know, people in coma for, for many, many years. And uh, Lord Yahweh want to took her up and raise her. But it has to be something, um, you know, as a response for that, because he's been there talking to them in the beginning through the prophets, uh, and, and when they couldn't comprehend, he talked to the father, the first chapter of uh, Hebrew, first verse, that in the past, into the many different times, God spoke through the, the, the prophets. But when they didn't comprehend him, they sent the son. He spoke to them into the son. Now here is what exactly Israel need is the, the prophecy or the, the suffering Messiah, an encounter with the suffering Messiah. And, and saying so, uh, if you are not touched by the wounds of Jesus, he is the Messiah. And you know, and everyone know, even though you, you swear on him, whatever, but he is your Messiah and our Messiah. The, if the suffering of the Messiah do not touch your heart and change you, if you go, you know, there is a second uh, movie of uh, Mill Gibson about, you know, the Messiah second coming, I think, but the first coming of the Messiah was his passion. If it does not touch you and you feel like, oh, poor Jews, they had the Holocaust. Tell me about the Holocaust of the Christ and tell me why. And I have more details, but not for that uh, version. But Jesus is not supposed to, there is nothing or even one cause according to the Torah that he could be uh, killed. There is not even one, even the blasphemy they see talking about. So the prophecy of the suffering Messiah, and this is clear into the book of Isaiah. And I've seen, you know, the debate between Christian and Jews about that chapter and how really they, they really try to philosophize the things to hide it. But how can you go out about he was wound for our strong transgression? How Israel was wound for our transgression and he was bruised for our iniquity? How is that? and her chastisement of our peace put upon him. 
not her. You always talk about her in feminine. And with her stripes, we are healed. If you talk about Israel. But he's saying, and, and, and the chastisement of our peace, you have peace because he's been chastised and was all put upon him and with his stripes, you know? Jesus was trapped. He could be, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, put on the cross, crucified without stripes. But that's to fulfill the prophecy. Every part of the prophecy is done. So you cannot really, you know, when the prophecy come on a person, if you really had an encounter with God, the, the things come to you and you cannot put them in an order. Oh, da, 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 da. Sometimes something here and sometimes something there. And you don't know the, the prophet has to recall all those things and really listen to them. And it makes sense later, maybe for other people on other time. That's why he come to the... Um, uh, to Daniel and say, seal the prophecy and the same thing to John the Bat, uh, John the Revelator. It's not for the time. When the time will come, everything will be un unfolded. So I, I heard and it's just like very, very funny. They are disrespecting the intelligence of the Christians. And here is uh, my advice, I'm gonna say it soon, which is confirming the New Testament into uh, uh, Peter 1, 2, 24, all the Christian are aware of that verse whom in his own self, in his own self, bear, bear our sin in his own body. And I want you to understand, you know, more than by his stripes, we are healed and go for the healing ministry and all that. That word in, in his own body, this is a word that billions of dollars. But people and even Christians do not understand that the meaning of that word. You know, the Israeli guy, the Jewish rabbi was debating with the Christians and telling them why the, the judge will accept the penalty of someone to be put on another one. No, the penalty was not put on another one. Christian, please listen to this. Please listen to that teaching on that point because none of you understand that. Jesus, he's the head, we are the body. So we are all chastised in Jesus. None of us understand that. You are crucified with him who his own self bear our sins. He, he bear your sins because you are part of him and he's part of you. He just had happened that he has the head and you, maybe the eye, maybe your ear, maybe your, your finger, it can be anything. So you have, Jesus didn't take only your place and you take his place, which this doesn't sound into the court of uh, earth, correct? If someone kill, he has to be killed, not his mother, not his father. So according to that, uh, you know, um, uh, analogy, whatever the Christian use most of the time is not correct. But here is here. He bear our sins in his own body uh, on a tree. So the body of Christ is us. So your sins, in, if you're a finger in that body, he, the finger pay the price of his sin. If you're an eye, the eye was chastised. Every part of the body of Christ was chastised in him. It's the same thing happened when every part of us got contaminated by the death because of the sin and disobedience of Adam. We all had a DNA disrupted and corrupt. All of us go for hell and death. So I want you to understand that. And, uh, and then he's saying that being dead to sin should live to uh, unto righteousness, no more sins. And in whose tribe we are. So we have to dig a little bit into the suffering of that Messiah. Because argument, uh, you know, they were arguing before him and he was just like making mockery of them. Uh, very, very disrespectful. And he know very well the chapter 53. Uh, you want to put it on your uh, Israel, good for you. You missed a Messiah that other people did. I just wanted to pray that the Israelites see their Messiah who crying on them, you know, crying for them. They cannot see him. They go on the wall and they touch him and he touched them on the other side and they do not understand the suffering of the Messiah and how much it did for them and for us. Why is that important? You know, why should we have a Messiah or not? Because the Messiah is the promise of God. When you receive him, you approve that God promised in the seed of the, uh, in the, in the beginning, in the, in the garden. And when he spoke about that, the seed of the woman will prevail, will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. 
uh, that's the Messiah who's going to do that. That's a prophecy, first prophecy about the Messiah, about the Lord who's going to come and crush. So you believe that God is truthful, trustful. He fulfilled what he said. So whatever you're going to say about who he is going to decide for your eternal uh, future. That's why it's important. And really, and, and, and the Christians or whatever, um, they are um, not really having anything to gain from you guys, Jewish nations, as much as you think. But all their attention is that you do not go and eternally lose your salvation after you've been a child of Abraham. So we really don't want to, uh, you know, bury the truth. We want to go into the truth doorway and enter and see what is there. And I'm just going to tell you the thing which make me really upset with all those debates. The Christian think they are Gentiles. And Gentiles mean infidel. It means heathen. You are not Gentile. You are not infidel. And you are not heathen. Gentiles is Omam. Omam is Goyim. Omam and Gomim, it means nations. We are nations. God has no contract, no covenant with the Gentiles, not with the infidels and in heathen. He don't. So stop. Let them calling you Gentile because you are not. The moment you are Gentile, you are the one outside the door. You will not be with the Lord. You're not child of Abraham. So uh, you are the children of Abraham, not only spiritual, but most of us are spread around the world in a way. Uh, and, and then we are gathering back again, the 10 tribes of Israel and the two tribes of Israel. Now we have that uh, thing, which I want to put it in order before we speak. So don't speak to me from a higher position because you are not higher. You have the beginning of the book, but I have all the secrets of the end of the book. When you are a rabbi and you cannot uh, um, answer your congregation and tell them what's going to happen for them if they die, when this question can ask for a baby Christian, even not attending church or whatever, he will tell you where you're going to go when you die. But you do not know because you put the, the, the end of the book to, uh, 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 you know, you, you dismiss it and you uh, belittle it and you mock it and all whatever. Well, you should really read it because what's going to happen into the end time is more in details in the, in the second part of the book, the Holy Bible. But here is the key that the Lord said, you know, M, the MV also of Ephraim. Ephraim is mean the, the 10 tribes shall depart and the adversary of Judah, which are the one that they call themselves Jew, uh, Jews now. So 10 tribes and the two tribes, two and a half. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So this is a relationship between what you call it uh, Gentiles and Jews. They are not Gentiles, so do put a bit respect to the ones who are uh, same level as you. There are 12 tribes, everyone the same. God didn't make the sons of um, uh, the free woman, which are Leah and, and uh, 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 Rachel, higher than the other six sons of, you know, the other four sons from the, their maids. They say, make them equal. So be careful when you do put yourself a bit higher. And this should really come to an end. No vexing, no belittling, no uh, uh, attitude, no thinking you're, ah, oh, those go in, those dogs, don't. They're not to do that. Here is the word of God into the book of Acts, you know, when they're starting to, uh, they were stoning uh, uh, Stephanus. And he said, which of the prophets you have, your, your father have, uh, which of the prophets have not your father persecuted? Right? They have slain them, which show before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have bear, you have been now the betrayer and murderer. So your parents, your grandparents, the one who give you the law and whatever, uh, persecutes the prophets and now you're talking about the prophets so be careful of this you know and and, and let us talk equal one uh, as one and one because the lord have a tender mercy on this nation and and they insist to go to the direction when but god want to save because the rapture is coming it's either the rapture brother and sister or the great tribulation and this great tribulation is mainly due for the jews it's mainly done for them 
So God will save them. They are the firstborn and the love of God uh, for them. So he will not neglect them. But if you, if you, he has to chastise them in a way that their eyes can be open. So if you are one of those children of God who really don't want to obey, you have to open your eyes. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, chastised. The Lord wanted to comfort his people. They cry. They're searching for him. Well, let me give you a little bit of things um, that Israel reject and go in detail in them. Israel rejects God's direction, direct leadership. They de decide not you. No, Yahweh. No, 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 Yahweh for me. I don't want Yahweh. I'm so scared of him. And I wanted the human revelation of Moses. And reject, they also reject God the king. No, 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 no. We don't want. And God said to, to uh, Samuel, they didn't reject you. They rejected me. So they don't want God leadership. They don't want that uh, uh, encounter, which without encounter, you are not really able to do anything in your life. You follower of others. They tell you a story. You have to believe their story and, and join them in whatever. If they're liars, then you're lied to. But when you have an encounter with God, you know, when Moses has that encounter, when Abraham get that encounter, it's very different. You know that he's talking about reality cannot be denied. And your face is different. So you're not really into a place where you can be checked or uh, uh, what they're going to happen. You are sure. There is part called surety. If there's an English word like that. Certainty. You are certain of the things will happen because now you know. Israel also rejected their Messiah and wanted a human Messiah. The, the, the Jewish people that I heard, many of them during many uh, episodes of dialogue and, and talk, uh, the Messiah is not divine. And I spoke about that before, and I said why the divine Messiah should be divine and cannot be a uh, human only. Uh, so, but there is something very good which the Israelites have, the Jewish people have. Israel does not truly understand the need of a second coming of the king. They don't believe, they don't understand that one. But they are waiting for the Messiah to come, the millennium, or, or the king, the 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 leadership, the uh, kingdom of the Messiah. They are waiting for it more than the Christian. They are understanding more. They are waiting for 5,700, whatever years, you know, too long. But every Jew is waiting for the Messiah to come. Christian are not. They are not. None, none of the Orthodox Catholic or many of the Protestant and many, uh, the one was, you know, really not very Christian, which are the, seven day Adventist, whatever they're waiting for the Messiah's coming, whatever. But I mean, Israel is waiting for the Messiah to come. The church is not that much, except few people who are really gonna be crowned because there is a crown for the one waiting for his, desiring his coming. What is the problem of the church? Are they better? Not much. The Christian rejected the Torah. The Christian rejected the Sabbath and the rest of the Sabbath. I'm gonna say, oh, it's changed from Saturday to Sunday. There is no uh, uh, command uh, for the rest. There is no such thing. The Jews are commanded to rest on that day. So we lost the Sabbath and we lost the day of the rest because you enter into the rest of the Lord on that day and you get your battery get charged weekly. We lost it. A Christian rejected circumcision. The Christian does not truly understand the concept of the kingdom of the coming king. Like I said, you probably need, uh, hear that because I speak about that a uh, lot and a lot. The coming of Christ so doesn't come on as a surprise. But uh, Yahweh, the Lord God, after he gave Israel what they wanted, he gave them what he wanted for them. He revealed his eternal plan and give them something they cannot comprehend, the God-man, the King Messiah. We go on to details of these points. So here is, uh, like I said, the Jews rejected the Messiah, the Christian rejected the Torah. 
There is the two aspect of Israel, and they will not have any of the promises of God if unless they are united together. This is, we show it last time, and we show it again this uh, session, talking about the always when we say Joseph or we say um, uh, Ephraim. Uh, or the Israelites, we're talking about the ten tribes. When you say Judah, we're speaking about uh, the two, the two and a half uh, tribes. So here is they are the two sons of authority, and they need each other. Without the church, the Jewish people cannot comprehend what is going to happen. And without the Jewish people and their comprehension to the word of God, we are missing the essential part of our thing. But our salvation is without them. So we're not really building our faith on them. You know, we're not trying to uh, Judaize people. No, we don't have, not interested because the salvation is in our uh, Lord who come in the second part of the book anyway. But you can you understand the plan of God from the beginning till the end. And God has one plan. He shows us one time. He put Adam and Eve into the garden one time. He will never do that again. He shows Israel and now he shows the church. But unless we choose him, unless I get into the more details and you don't get into that important, all that story from the beginning to end, as he shows us, we have to choose him. Israel has to choose the Lord. Otherwise, we won't be there. So what happened here, like we said, Ephraim, when he said uh, 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 Judah, they gave us the Torah, they gave us the Messiah, um, and, and they keep the law, they are the captain and the, and the temple as well, and they are keeper of those parts. And the Ephraim, which are the other tribes, uh, it's a good story, the difference between the mentality or the heart of the two tribes and the ten tribes, which means the church and the other Jewish people. You go to the John tree, uh, which is the master rabbi or one of the big leaders of Israel, Nicodemus. When he faced the Messiah and understood about to be born again, he never went and evangelized or speak that good news to anyone. He kept it for himself and himself alone. And that's the attitude of all the people who are from the two tribes. Ah, the temple is ours, the Torah is ours, the Messiah is ours, the king is ours. No. On the other hand, you go from chapter three to chapter four, the Samaritan woman is from the 10 tribes. She, you are the Messiah. You told me everything happened in my life. With that only simple truth, she had the whole city converted and follow God. So that's why God took the 10 tribes and took them away and spread them because they're good people to spread the word of God. You don't have to be a theologian to start to speak about Jesus and the work that he did for you. The church spread everywhere. They don't even, they lost even their roots from the tribes or where, where they're coming from. But they know one thing. He knows everything about me. He's the Messiah. With that small revelation, the woman went and evangelized. I'm a sinner. He didn't. Re he overlooked my sins, and he spread. Uh, he covered for me. He was just gentle with me. He's gonna give me life. The other, he gave me the water which flow for eternal life. So the, the, the emotional part or the, 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 the way of the 10 tribes want to share, God use this faculty or that talents to spread the gospel and the word of God around the world. And, and this is the church. So I'm not talking here to Jews, I'm talking to the church as well. This is how the message of the gospel was uh, spread all over. So God has to use the two witness, you know, on both sides, the one who keep everything uh, Taiji and, and the other one who spread the word of God. Uh, so like I said here, problem of the Jewish, they think that because the peace process, you know, when the child will be the lion and the peace around the world didn't happen, then that Messiah called Jesus is fake. It's not the true Messiah. And they insist on it. 
as if oh that the only truth please if i forget let me say it before i go on further god is giving you time to have an encounter with him that's why he delayed he is not really pleased about do and don't do you have to know it's not like really god is slick or whatever you know so the kingdom of God and that peace, it will come in, in one day when the King Messiah will come. So they are waiting for him and expecting him over 5,000 going 600 years, waiting for that Messiah. We are very few of us counted on very, very few waiting for the Messiah to come that way, believing that, yeah, we know there is an end, but we don't uh, expect Messiah to come in, in a format in a way or another. So they are locked into this. So today, before I go further, Father, I pray and I release that lock over the Jewish nation that will not be locked into a place where they are expecting uh, they deny their Messiah because the peace process that is coming with him and only with him, they didn't see it yet. So I pray that this wrong idea come out of their mind by a revelation, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. Their king came. We well, see here the prophecy saying the coming of King of Zion. Zechariah said it 9 9 and Matthew 25 1 21 5 say it on the same time. And rejoice. And I'm not gonna go debate and do whatever because you Jews understand very well the prophetic verse and you know them by heart, and you do not really want it to twist to cover for yourself. Do as you like. But the heart of the church is to evangelize you because we want all Israel to be saved, as Apostle Paul said. All Israel to be saved. And all Israel means Jews, and I'm going to use the Gentiles, the Jews and Ephraim, Jews and Joseph, Jews and the nations who are coming from the essence of, the, of uh, 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 Abraham. We are not Gentiles. And that word was given by the, I think, the, the, the Catholic uh, Church to try to give us a name. And that name is like a, it's like a swear word. As if you go to a black man and tell him mega. It's very disrespectful. But now most of our Bible is written that way. When you go to the Arabic, uh, which is close to the, the Hebrew, you find the umam. Al umam means the nations. The two words have the same meaning. But when you say Gentile, you think, oh, those, you know, there was a beautiful man coming, standing, debating with the Christian and said, I just wanted to tell you in the beginning before we go further, because you're going to be thinking, am I Jews or not? I'm telling you I'm a Gentile. And I said, why? You're not a Gentile. You can't stand and defend the, the Messiah when you're Gentile. You're an infidel. You are a heathen. You are the one rejected of God. How can you defend the Messiah? They don't know. Well, the Jews know. I had a man, which is from the Greek community, knowing a lot of things about the Jews. And he said to me, when you go to the Jewish people, now don't go for your DNA. They go from your name, your surname. I said, oh, yeah, well, in Egypt, you know, they, they robbed us from the surname. We don't have a surname. Uh, like, very, very interesting. Uh, my sister, her surname of her husband, Abdel Shahid, it means the one who's been uh, um, killed. And my husband had that same surname. I was looking the other day and I said, wow. So it means these people uh, probably uh, not very rich on their name. They, pay, they couldn't pay the price and they uh, uh, died for their faith. So they robbed us from the surname, but what he was saying something very interesting. The Coptic people from Egypt are the tribe of Judah and they have respect for them. You do not know this, but the Jews know this. Amazing. That's why I'm telling them why you didn't go after the Coptics. Why didn't you go after the, the people from uh, Assyrian and the, the ones who are there? You know they are the remnant of the 10 tribes before we go further away. But let's hear saying the word of God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jesus. Ah, shout. Be happy, rejoice. Your king is come unto you. He is just and having salvation. Lowly, mean humble, 
and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fall of an ass. Word by word by Matthew 21, 5. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king on, coming comes unto you meek and sitting upon, upon an ass and a colt, the fall of an ass. Word by word. Prophecy fulfilled into the entrance of Jesus. But you can say, you know, there is some prophecy that Jesus participated in them, but some he cannot. It was done for him, not by his uh, desire. Like that one here, uh, that's, uh, you know, like I really gathered a lot of Bible verses and whatever, but the Jews know. And you cannot really continue to try to debate on verses that you know, and you know that those are messianic proof without shadow of a doubt. Micha 5 is saying, but you Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth unto me that is to be the ruler of Israel. The king who rule over Israel, who's going forth having been from the old and from everlasting. So that one who's born from Bethlehem uh, Ephrata, that little nation, uh, city or country or whatever spot on the, the map, unknown, very belittled by others. Out of you come the one who's going to rule over Israel. He was from the old, from everlasting. This is uh, the proof of the Godship, one of the very good uh, Bible verses for the, uh, that the Messiah has to be divine from an everlasting. Now we go back to this, that the Prince uh, of Peace, you know, you have to have that encounter. If the, the passions of the Christ don't make your heart melt, nothing can change you. You have no hope for eternal life with him because he is eternal life. Uh, here in Isaiah, the two chapter two verses, every Christian should know them by heart. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. We talk about that last time. There is on our generation no versions of that kind of description. He's calling it a sign that the virgin will have a child. And of course, the most powerful one that every Christian should know is Isaiah 9 6. Isaiah 9 6. Know it by heart. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government means the rulership, the kingship shall be upon his shoulder and his name should be called Wonderful, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, the Mighty God, which is the Father, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So all this is talking about the Trinity that uh, make the Jewish people uh, and the rabbi crazy about it. And this is Old Testament. So those Bible verses are very, very important and simple. You know, Zechariah 9, 9, uh, Micha 5, 2, and the two Isaiah 7 and 9. Of course, the whole chapter of 53 of Isaiah, but um, the coming of the second coming of the Christ is over. I, I don't know about that uh, number. I just got it from the picture. Maybe exaggerated or maybe too much. Like over 300 reference in the Bible about the coming of the Christ, the Messiah. We're we going to use the word Messiah more because the Christ, most of us think is Jesus Christ, like uh, uh, his name and his surname. No, the Messiah, the promise, salvation to men. Here is, uh, you know, one of the very, very smart Christians. You know, the apostle didn't observe the Torah. So sh why should we observe the Torah? Uh, we're not trying to, to make you uh, follow other religion. This is the religion of the, our fathers, this is the religion, or that's the, the things that God spoke to the, and is fulfilled. We don't want to go to killing animals and doing this because Christ is our, but things when God said that's covenant and eternal, the feast of Israel are eternal covenants. The Sabbath is eternal covenant. Circumcision is eternal covenant. Who should stop such thing? And by the way, all the Copts are uh, circumcised as children because Muslims even do that in Egypt. So here, like we said, the Jews re re rejected the physical Messiah and the church rejected the Torah. Uh, and they rejected the Sabbath as well. 
Because part of the Sabbath is we rest in God. We sit there and rest in him. But we're busy doing everything. I, I bet you do your laundry and whatever into and the cleaning of the house and all that on the Sabbath. So it's not only changing the day from the Saturday to Sunday, no, no. We're breaking the law of God. Uh, most of Ephraim, which are like the church, meaning the church, does not truly really understand the concept of the coming of the kingdom of God and the coming of the Christ. Um, they are waiting for something. It's not even very different from the waiting of the Jews. Uh, and we're going to go into details on that. We all die and go to heaven or go to whatever. Uh, you tell the church, the Orthodox church or the Catholic about millennium, say, what do you mean? And, and, and the confusion between the verses, you have to get the concept of the millennium. So you understand that that Bible verse is a millennial verse and it's not the end time verse, two different things. So otherwise, you know, uh, you're confused. We really don't want to go for the law. We reject it totally. We don't know that the Torah, the law and Jesus are the same one. It's like the father and the son and the Holy Spirit are one. It's the same one. Uh, so we are they are waiting for the king messiah to come and 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 king and rule here god in ezekiel say i make my holy name known in the most in the midst of my people israel and when he spoke about israel here it means the 12 tribes it's not talking about the 10. When he say Israel, you have to understand because if he mean the 10 tribes, he will say the same for Israel and this, repeat the same sentence for Judah. So he wanted to be in the midst of Israel, the whole 12 tribes. And I will not let them profane my holy name no more uh, anymore. And then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Uh, uh, there is here, of course, the prophecy of Hosea when he's saying that the children of Israel will stay for a while. They ab shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, and without sacrifice. This is the time when they are really on the wailing wall. And this is long as 2023 years by now. Uh, and without an image, without an effort, without a, a tariffim. An image here, you think, is something they bow to. You know, well, here is the image. It's the image of God, which is the Christ. Afterward, the children of Israel return and they seek the Lord from their God and David, their king. So two things. Uh, they ask for God and they ask for the king. And they shall fear the Lord and his goodness into the latter day. Those are all the Old Testament prophecy, all beautiful uh, we have to understand them very well. Why Israel is important? Why the Christian has to understand the, the, the importance of Israel? There is a prophecy here in, 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 um, uh, in Zechariah, Zechariah 8. Israel ruled in the kingdom. Thus said the Lord of hosts in those days, it shall come to pass that 10 men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. I'm glad that he didn't translate it here to Goyim or to Gentiles. Even shall take hold of the skirt of a Jew, uh, of him that is a Jew saying, we will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. Like, let's say now we, we have this property and I have the deed with me, but you don't have the deed with you. You have the contract out. So they have that contract and they have the information. But that house belonged to you and to me together. It's all the, the, the house of our father. But you have the deed. That's the only difference. But I mean, like, we know that they are truthful in a way. That it's not true, you know, that they are very truthful. Uh, we can we went before on the dark side of Israel, but um, now we're trying to... Um, talk nicely to them so we can uh, earn them for the Lord. Isaiah 66, one, the last chapter, and it shall to come to pass that from one new moon, you know, we, we don't look at the moon things in, in uh, the, Jew, the Christian faith. And from one Sabbath to another, 
Shall all flesh come worship before me? This is a millennium scripture. So God never, you know, stop looking from one moon to the moon and from Sabbath to another. No, all flesh to come before me, says the Lord, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that they transgress against me. And their one shall be the worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And you've heard that repeated many times in the New Testament. They shall be an abhor to all flesh. This is the last chapter of Isaiah. He's talking about that. That God come to Moaid, which is the timing, uh, the time that God set into the Old Testament. He will do the same thing from time to time, from moon to moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, and people will come and worship him. Let's go for a simple uh, explanation. In the beginning, God, the temple was in the midst of the 12 tribes. Three and three, three and three, as you can see, the, the, like the cross. I love this picture because like the cross and the temple was here. But here is uh, the revelation and God was with them and he departed. There's no uh, uh, place for God like we read now into that. Uh, the Israel will be many days without king and without prince and without sacrifice or image or temple or anything. They lost this. God in our midst. But then God is restoring that into the book of Revelation, the second last chapter of uh, the, the word of God. And it's saying, um, and I heard the great voice of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God was man. So he will come again in a tabernacle format. Is not really impressed by the all the building with wood or all the building with bricks. No, a tabernacle of God with men, and He will dwell with them. Same thing, you know, happened when He was into the wilderness, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. This is not an Old Testament ver verse uh, chapter uh, verse. This verse is the Revelation second last. The tabernacle of God will man, with men, and he will be among them in Jerusalem as uh, the city of God. God will leave the heaven and he will be with us here. And, and someone genius, you know, he calculated the size of the new Je Jerusalem is huge. That number that you can read on the screen and his description according to the book of so they need to know about that Revelation 21. So that when someone will tell them what happened. When here is the key, which I repeat that again and again, uh, that any kid into the Jewish culture will know that. The second verse Jewish children memorize is Deuteronomy 33, which we talked about it last time. Moses commanded us a law, a Torah as a heritage for the assembly of Jacob. So this is their heritage. Like a father died and give them the heritage. The Torah is their heritage. They are taught that God's word is a legacy. And the next verse that they, uh, they learn by heart, they memorize, the Lord became king in Yeshurun. The Lord will never come as a king of the world, a Messiah, the king, except when the heads of the people were gathered, the heads of people of Israel, when all the tribe of Israel together, which means the church, and the good ones who calling themselves Jews. Then the millennium will start. Uh, do not know how this reconciliation would happen since Christian cannot be together in harmony. Brother and sister cannot be in harmony. Husband and wife cannot be in harmony. How the 12 trusts will be in harmony. Then the Lord become king. The kingdom of the Messiah will come. And here that Bible verse, it's very amazing, but it's in the New Testament. And also Israel, is they hit Apostle Paul, and he said that, so all Israel shall be saved. He's looking for the day that Israel be saved, which is the church people, and the one who call themselves Jews of the day, the good ones, of course, because there is a corrupt one, and, the, uh, and the, there is a third type, which are the synagogue of Satan, and the other type, which are mixture of the two. We can explain that another time. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. 
So their heart will be turned. God will change that. And, and, and so the, the deliverer means the savior come out of Zion. And he turned the ungodliness of Jacob, the Israelite, the 12 tribe together. And this is the heart of the church. Uh, their heart is to see all Israel, as the Apostle Paul said. That's not an Old Testament verse. It's a new one. Now here, I'm going to tell you, I was listening today to a rabbi uh, talking about uh, this uh, Sanhedrin 98, whatever, something very new, which I heard in one of those debates. And I was you know, trying to study what is that means. I was talking about the chapter 53 of the of the book of uh, Isaiah, uh, the Messiah, the suffering of the Messiah, not the suffering of the servant, you know. They go in debate and debate, you know, like I, I have collect all the verses about the servant, you know. Some of them he's talking about servant, which is Israel. Some of them, uh, um, the, the king Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, and another time, uh, uh, David, my servant, and another time. So that servant, it means that the one way, yeah, a few times, but you can differentiate exactly. I had them in verses, but not for today. We can maybe talk about them another time. When Christian evangelists expect, what Christians are expecting in the end time, a great revival, which I heard that when I was listening to Christian television long, long time ago, and I was just, yeah, God gonna pour his spirit on all flesh. And everyone will prophesy and see dreams and whatever. Well, that Jewish rabbi was expecting, and they're talking about that Israel will be all green. When Israel come to the nation, they make it green. When they leave, is all desert. And animosity, but yeah, but animos, enmity, hostility among all people. People don't love each other. It's like the, 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 it's a currency which is not working on this world anymore. The big great depression around the world. That's the word by word of the rabbi. I just took them and put them in words. People will not find their wedges or even the wedges of their animal. They will not find enough to, to survive. The price of everything will be the same uh, everywhere around the world. Like you wanted to buy uh, uh, that item, that cup, you will have that cup here with the same price around the world, of course, like the internet and, and the globalization of everything, you know, one word uh, government, one word currency and all that. And a big corrupt rulership will come to an end. So you can see here those pictures, people fight with each other, they, no one, and they don't wanna reconcile with each other, they kill each other, husband and wife, this is from the first uh, uh, rabbinic rabbi, uh, uh, teaching. And the Israelite ra rabbi was uh, explaining that vision of that rabbi in early uh, stage of the Christian, after, before the Christianity or just in the early time. Well, Christian expects the great uh, re revival in the end time. But what is here in Micah, he say it, in the last day, the mountain of the Lord temple, we have the Lord temple, not the Antichrist temple that is about to be built, will be established as sheaf among the mountains, highest, the, the boss sheaf, uh, the boss mountain of all the other mountains. It will be raised above the hills and people will stream to it. All people want to go. That Micah is repeated again, I think, into... Isaiah 4 or 2, it's the same thing. People will run to go to the mountain of the Lord, all of them. Uh, this is one of the important Bible verses as well that you have to add it to. Uh, great is the Lord and great, uh, greatly to be praised. Zion, the city of our Lord. On that holy mountain, uh, mountain of his holiness, a uh, beautiful for situation, the, the, the calling Jerusalem the joy of the whole world, the city of the great king. And God is known into her palaces for a refuge. So God will be physically into those places. 
uh, I just want to move a little bit more. Uh, so all the Torah is for all of us. All the Torah is for all of us. The word of God, the old and the new is for all of us. Uh, Zechariah say to the end, second phase of the invasion of Jerusalem by the Confederate Gentile armies, the army will come against the survivors from this uh, gathering around Jerusalem uh, from all the nation will worship annually in Jerusalem. Survival are not the Jewish remnant. Um, the nations whose army were destroyed by the Messiah. When Messiah will come, he destroy all those nations and the people with him, the people of God with him. There will be newly instituted worldwide religious order embracing both Jews and the nations and incorporate, drop this uh, slide, it's too slow. Uh, and he is saying, your king is coming to you. We are expecting a king. Now we're gonna see the, the places where they really rejected. In Exodus 20 verse 18, all the people when they saw the trembling, the thundering and lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the smoking uh, of the people saw it, they saw it. The rabbi was very proud that all nation on one go, they saw God, they saw him, all of them on the same time. And then he said, they stood far. No, 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 no. They said unto Moses, you speak with us, but we will, and we will hear, but let not God speak to us. They reject God to be speaking with them. And, and, and the Moses said to them, uh, fear not for God is not come to prove you that his fear may come before uh, your face, but he don't want you to sin, Sonia. Uh, and the people stood afar from Moses. So here we can see that the people reject God, not for me. But God is giving you the difference between the coming, the first coming of the Messiah and the second coming because he has to have an encounter with you. It's not up to you. They said, no, no, we cannot stand that. That thundering and that lightning, no, not for us. Go and talk to him. They want the revelation of men. So what give, God gave them, give, they gave them something called the rabbinic religion. Uh, and I heard that, you know, from the rabbi. And I was really, because we Christians are proud. Peter said to us that the word of God is the only solid things on, on which we stand. Peter said that. But the religion of the Jews are not... Uh, standing on the Torah alone is standing on the teaching of the rabbis, how they interpret the word and how they repeat it again and again and hundreds of them, books and books of interpretation of different uh, ages, different time of rabbis. It's not only the Torah written by Moses or whatever. What happened here? So they come and twist the Bible verses and change it and, and for them to, uh, you know, reject the Messiah that have to change all those things. It's not a religion based on the Torah. And that was shock for me. I thought there are the people who look after the Torah and we are safe that we are receiving, you know, the book that those people very meticulous are carrying and keep it intact for us. But no. They go and they depend on their, they call themselves, we are not, uh, we are rabbinic. I don't know if the spelling is right, but they depend on the interpretation of the rabbi rather than the Torah itself. Now we're gonna see that people uh, that they, they took after them, you know, uh, this word is very clear to the Arabic speaking people, the English is not. It's talking about Moses and I spoke about that last time. The Moses are supposed to be the one which is very patient, very calm, very long suffering, you know? And, and he said here, now the man Moses was very meek. That word meek is wrong. In the Arabic version, Halim. Halim, it means very, he take, you know, everything and he pass it, you know? Above all men, which were upon the whole face of the earth. Well, we see that Moses who give us the Torah, which depend, if they doubt in what happened with the Messiah, the argument of that guy was said, you know, when the Messiah will come, 
that wild word peace will be known to everyone. But those works that the Messiah, your Messiah did are not known. Imagine. And he despised, you know, and, and ridiculized, you know, and denied even the resurrection and all those things. It's up to him. It's his loss, not ours. But, uh, you know, why do we have to believe into Moses? That is part that we are taken by faith because we have that encounter with God. It's not only because what he said, like that encounter that the people of Samaria came to, to uh, uh, encounter when they came to the Messiah said, oh, well, listen, we are believing in him that he's the Messiah, not because of what you said, but because we heard from him. It's the same thing. You know, the word of God, either the word of God is corrupted into the Jewish things that come from the, the Moses, which write, you know, the story of the Genesis and the Noah and the flood thousands of years after Adam is nearly thousand years old, 900, whatever, and his son and his son. How Moses can write for us all those things? He was not there, you know? And, and he see like a bush burning and the bush talk to him. That's something very unacceptable if you talk it to a child, whatever, without the element of believing. So why do you want to make that sacred? Well, your religion is just rabbinic. Where us is depending on the word and the word of God alone, the word of God and the spirit of God, which reveal the meaning and witness to our heart that this is the truth. So that truth need to be revealed to them more than just study the word and, and start to argue and, and twist the words to make it um, uh, more acceptable. And like I said last time, he killed the Egyptian. He threw the word of God, which written by the hand of God from his anger. So he was not really patient or anything. And in the end of his day, he hit the, the, the rock, which is Christ. He hit him. He threw the stone, which is hand of God, and he hit the, the, the rock, which is Jesus, who was walking with them to give them water. So that's a guy who is, and I don't know if this split uh, rock is the one they're talking about. They put it in uh, Saudi Arabia to pretend that that was there. But all those events was not in Saudi Arabia. It was in Egypt, into the Sinai area. It's almost one hour. Uh, all right. Should we stop here? All right, let's stop because the video don't go if it's more than one hour. Uh, stop.